Yeah. Open your Bibles, if you will, to Malachi, the third chapter. And I want to just pick up, I won't do a lot of them, but I want to catch a few verses. Verse 14 says, Ye have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Mm. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this experience. It is an emotional one. But it comes out of a thankful heart. It's a physical one. But it comes as a result of being filled constantly by you, by your spirit. It is a most powerful one. That praise is calmly. Praise open up doors and praise unlock the future. Praise guides and protects. Praise orders our steps. Praise is what we do. Praise is who we are. We are so thankful God for this privileged time to come collectively as a church, as one body, to praise your name, to give you thanks publicly for what you've done privately. Thank you for your word now, Lord, and take it, Lord, and dispatch it among our hearts and cultivate the ground that it would be good seed that planted in soil that can handle it, that it will grow a fruit unto repentance, Fruit unto righteousness. Fruit, Lord, unto praise. Fruit unto victory. Touch us sweet now, Lord. Hide us behind Calvary's cross. Help us to recognize that it was Jesus who paid it all. So all to him we owe. Hold back anything that is not like you. Release fresh now, Lord, your anointing. Have thine own way, Lord. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and shape us now, Lord, that we may come out with our hands raised to give you praise for your wonderful acts of kindness. It is in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Say amen again. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. The Holy Spirit know how to hook it up, don't he? Somebody going to keep on pushing on because God has spoken to your heart today and said this morning, Joshua 1, 9, I'm with you wherever you go. So I command you to be of good courage. I'm wherever you are I am it's gonna be all right today I want to talk to you from this subject and I, and I, and I kind of agonize over on what really to say to us in a subject wise and the Lord just told me just talk to them and let them know and ask them a question is there any profit to serving God I'm waiting on some answers. That not question. God asked us, is there any profit to serving God? We in some crazy times. We live it in some foolish times. And to our preachers and to our deacons and to all of you God's children. See, when I get like this, it's because I'm trying to calm down so I can do this. But every time I kind of get where I need to be, 
I see that screen being erected and where I should be. God didn't let me go there. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and Jocelyn said uh, that he put a fence all around her while she was driving with her son. You did say that, didn't you? And the enemy tried to sidetrack her, but well, when God put a fence around <laughs> it is unpenetrable. You, you don't have a weapon on earth, outside of earth that can tear down what God built up. Somebody been trying to tear down you. But they didn't build you. God built you. And whatever, whoever God builds, only God can reduce. And he loves us too much to see us struggling without his aid. So keep your heads up. Is there any profit in serving the Lord? Malachi, a book that people kind of shy away because they think that what it's all talking about is some money. It talks about that, but it deals with some, some situation. God, uh, between Malachi and, and Matthew, God shut up. Shut up talking to the folks because the folks had lost their mind. They, they forgot about who God was. And for 400 years, I can't imagine a day without God saying something to me. Imagine 400 years that God is not speaking uh, to the children of Israel and the children of Judah and the northern kingdom Israel, the southern kingdom Judah. He's speaking not to them. But, he, but when he does speak, you know God won't be angry for long. Uh, he does calm himself down. And, and he, when he becomes angered, he does not sin. But he won't always um, allow stuff to continue to go away from him. And allow people to come against him. Malachi is... A prophet and he's a prophet when God gets ready to speak to uh, his people he used his word and in a prophet that speaks ought not to be speaking of his own but should be speaking the word of the Lord what you have sitting in your lap is the word of God and watch now the people have really lost their minds and and Malachi he does a, a six-count indictment on the children of Israel, on Judah. And one of the indictments is he indicts them because uh, they're repudiating God's love. Look at that in verse 1 of chapter 1. says, the burden of the Lord, uh, of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. He says in verse 2, I have loved you saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein has thou loved me? One of the indictments that he does, and not only to the folks in Malachi day, but it, I believe he's doing the same day. I believe that he is, is it indicting us because we have left our first love. The people of God in Malachi was coming to bring them to the side and let them know that no matter what you've done, God still loves you. Say that again, Willie. Whatever you've done, whatever you haven't done, things that you have messed up in, don't ever forget the fact that God still loves you. God loves you in this fact while we were yet dead in our trespass and sin, the Lord loved us right on. He indicts Malachi, makes a first indictment that 
He repudiates. You are repudiating God's love. I mean, you have forgotten about God's love. You don't really understand. You've forgotten that God's love is greater than you. The second thing that he does there, and he, he says that he, he indicts them for refusing God, his, his honor that is due him. Verses 6 through uh, chapter 2 and verse 9 talks about how they refused God. The sixth verse of chapter 1 said, And son honored his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? That's why I'm talking about you may not be able to jump and shout. Listen, you may not be able to run around like other folk. You may not be able to walk like you used to. You may not be able to raise your hands the way you want to. But if you got anything on your body, if you can open your mouth at least, you ought to honor God with your lips. You ought to honor him with your heart. You ought to let what's going on the inside work on the outside. And not everybody can do it the same way. But if God has been good to anybody, you ought to honor him, not only with your lips, but you ought to honor him with your living. Amen. And you ought not to have superficial love. We ought not to play around. We ought to love him because he first loved us. And so Malachi, the messenger, the prophet, the servant of God is delivering the message. And he says to, he says to Judah, he says, Judah, you have lost me. You have run away from me. And now you don't honor me. It's the third thing that he says here, and he talks to us, and he talks about it in chapter 3, almost in our text. He says that he's indicting them because they're rejecting God's faithfulness. The people of that day were not only forgotten about the fact that God loves them, and then they stopped honoring him, but they forgot the fact that God is faithful. Y'all, he's faithful. Let me tell you when I'm talking about faithfulness, when everybody else shut down, that's the time that God starts up. When it, when it seems the bleakest in your life, listen to me, when it seems so morbid, when it seems there are no sunshine, when it almost seems to the fact that you are on your last whatever it is, that's the time that God is faithful. God was with you when you couldn't see your way out. God was with you on your way out. And God is with you now that you are out. You got to keep in mind that he's faithful. He'll be there when no one else. He'll be there when no one else has a kind word. He'll always be in your corner. He'll always make a way for you. Is there anyone in this room know that God is faithful? The Bible says that the people of God back in the day of Malachi, God has been so good to them, but they forgot about that he's a faithful God. And there is a fourth indictment that he gives to them. He says, now listen, I'm indicting y'all because y'all are trying to redefine God's righteousness. You're calling evil good and calling good evil. I mean, you know that God is righteous by himself, whether we line up with it or not. God is righteous. He's holy. There's nothing crazy about God. Whenever God does what he does, he don't need to change his mind about it because before he even does it, it's already right. He's sovereign. Not only is he sovereign, but he has the power to do what he wants to do. And the scripture said that he has righteousness. In fact, we are righteous because he's righteous. But they're trying to redefine. Can't you see America? Can't you see the world today? Not only the nation, but can't you see the world today that they are trying to redefine God's righteousness? God is still the same yesterday and forever. He is not going to change. He hated sin then and he, and he hates sin now. If the world continues on, he will still be hating sin. Amen? He was, listen, God loved people then and he loves them now. God has power to do what he wants to do then and he can do it now. God has not changed. He is immutable. There is a fifth indictment that he gives. And I see that in verse 7 through 12 of chapter, of chapter 3. He indicts them because he said, y'all robbing me of my riches. Yeah. Oh, that's a hush. I didn't mean for you to get a hush. 
But I'm just saying he's indicting them. And he says, uh, you robbing me of my riches. He asks the question, would a man rob God? And, and yes, a man will. But why would you rob him that did everything right for you? Why would you go against him that gives you life? Why in the world will we come in and hold back from God the stuff that really belonged to God? And then sixthly, the sixth indictment. And you'll see that in verse 13 through 15 of chapter 3. He indicts them for reviling God's grace. Grace is unmerited favor. We as folks, we have forgotten that we are who we are. We have what we have, not because of who you are. Talk again, preacher. Some people think because who they are, where they live, where they come from, had merited them what they have. You and I got what we have only because God allowed it. Amen. And God allowed it not because we were good. Amen. Say it again, preacher. God allow us to be in good health not because we exercise. God allowed us some financial freedom not because we were, we were uh, great planners. God allows everything that we have. Come on, get this, get this. God allows it because of his love for us. And if he doesn't allow it, we can't get it. And we can't go around trying to revile God's grace. Grace is that thing that holds you from doing stuff that the devil wants you to do. Grace is that thing that comes from God that gives us peace in the midst of storms. And so Malachi is sent to a stiff-necked people. He's sent to almost look like the church. The folks that really have forgotten about it. You know, you know who I'm talking about. They may not be here today, but you, you know some of the folk that, that, that God has been real good to you. Now they have slipped away from him and now they don't even come around no more. They don't even pray no more. They, they don't even sing song of Zions no more. They don't even raise their hands no more. Church is just something they don't really care about. But I remember, I remember, I remember when they didn't have nothing. I remember when they didn't have no direction. I remember when they couldn't not even figure it out it was God on their side can I say something here today don't ever get too big for God that you can't come by and gather with his folks when he commands you to do so amen now that wasn't the message that was just a little tidbit that was the context of why God sent Malachi to the folk of Judah and I believe that there are some Judeans in here now and he's speaking, every last one of us, don't look over at your neighbor, don't look back, don't even look up here. All of us are Judean in some way. We have lost our way. We think that serving the Lord is not profiting. But serving the Lord on the beginning of this thing, serving the Lord will pay off not after a while. It pays off right now. Come on, help me preach this here. Serving God is not a time to, to sit back and complain. Serving God pays off right now. Do you know what, what a blessing it is that we all were headed to hell and God saved us and allow us to preach sermons, allow us to deek, allow us to help, allow us to teach, allow us to sing, allow us to do. It is God's love, grace, and mercy. And I think we done gotten so big, we think that we can make it by ourselves. But I dare you lay down and try to fix yourself up. I dare you think about something and try to remember it. I dare you try to go and without his 
protection. Turn now if you will. I'm ready to move now. You got the context? Somebody says it's going to be one of them kind of sermons, ain't it, Rev? Chapter 3. Is there any profit to serving God? Verse 14 says in chapter 3, ye, ye have said it is vain to serve God. You know what he's saying? That how they look, 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 look how they address God. Watch, watch how you watch how you approach God, church. Saints of God, watch how you get in God's face. Watch, watch what you say. Watch how you act towards God. Be, be always careful that you're not messing with no homeboy. You ain't messing with no homegirl. This is God. This is the one that stepped out of nowhere. Can I help you? This is the one that calls you to open your eyes and give you sight. It's God. It's not, it's not somebody that you just hang around with. It's God. It's Jehovah, it's Elohim, it's Yahweh. This is God, the one that can snatch back breath and you will die dead. The one that can take dead folk and bring them alive. This is God. He's the only one I know that can do what he want to do. Can take anybody, can take any circumstance and bring some good out of it. He's God. One lady one day was standing in the service of the Lord and and uh, laid her head back and, and opened her eyes and talking about, I want to see you because I want you to see me. What a fool. God is nobody to play with. The scripture says, look how they address God. They first of all address God given their opinion. You know, when E.F. Hudden speak, you all listen. I say, you all, you all, that ain't what I want to say. E.F. Hudden can't give you peace. Come on. And much as I love my president, President Barack Obama, he, he don't have the final word. And he's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. And hear this, he does not have omnipotence. He got some power, but he don't have all power. Watch, watch these folks. See, this is how you know when you have strayed away from God, because you start to address him giving your opinion. The way I think, I think it ought to be this way, God. I'm like, who made you God? If you God, go on to Calvary. If you're God, hang out there. And if you're God, let them bury you. And if you're God, get up. Look at their opinion. Watch their opinion. Malachi, the second chapter, verse 17, real quickly said, Ye have, they said, you have weary, ye have weary the Lord with your words. Now, God don't get tired, but God does get tired of foolishness. Watch this. God don't get tired. But God does get tired of foolishness. Some, some, some people keep on just, you just keep on, you keep on, God keep on getting you out. You keep on getting in, God keep on getting you out. And notice what 17 verse chapter 2 said. Said, said, said that ye have wearied the Lord with your words, yet ye say, wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them, or where is the God of judgment? Listen to their opinion. That's what they're saying. You know, hey, since everybody doing it, y'all buckle up here today, please. I don't care what, how many folk come out of the closet. And I'm not scared of none of y'all. I don't care what closet they coming out of and I don't care how many coming out of the closet, homosexuality is still stinks in the nostril of God. I don't care about no lay gays, what is it, lay, lesbian, all that gay lesbian. Don't, don't look at me crazy. I'm just telling you, God ain't concerned about your opinion. I think that y'all just let them get along. Listen to how folk talking these days. The one in high position, they starting to curb their message. Sin is still sin, and in God's nostril, it stinks. 
Can I have a witness up in the house? I'm really not asking you for your hand claps and amen. I'm just going to tell you what the Bible said. Your opinion doesn't matter because only God, when it's over with, has the last word. Can I have a witness here? When you fooling around with somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband, say, ouch, oh, ooh, ah, oh, that's still God considers sin. So move on, Reverend. We got you on that one. Move on. Move on. We think because people slipping and dipping, because there's an abundance of folks doing it, that it ought not to be, well, maybe that's the way it is. Can I say that God still is against it? If you are not taking care of your house, man, when God has given you the woman, the family, and you ain't taking care of your house, God still frowns on that. Go on down the road there, Willie. Woman, if God has given you a good man, might not be good looking, may not make all the money, but he comes around and does the thing that he ought to do, that's who God has given you. You ought to be satisfied with that. And if you look for another, you ain't going to get what you're looking for because God has already given you what you look for. I said, bag up off me, preacher. <laughs> Given their opinion. And these were not folks that didn't know God. These were people who knew God. They, are, they, they addressed him. Can I say one, one thing lastly about your opinion? When a lie is a lie, it's going to always be a lie. Can I have a witness? Let me help somebody. Let me help. Let me help. help. Let me help somebody. When you are walking in truth, they may say what you're saying, what you're doing is not right, but you keep on walking in truth because a lie will always lay down, but the truth will always rise. <laughs> I ain't getting many amens. The ladies just clapping here because the heavens have said. God's not interested in your opinion. Well, God, I think that we ought to do. You think what? Well, God, I think that we, I think that since, since I've been in the church so many years, I think, God said, think what? Let, since you think, give yourself another year. Well, I don't think I can do that. You're right, you can't do it. Only I can give your life. Watch how they address the servant. They said, serving God, you know, it, it really ain't going to pay out. When Notice what they said in Malachi, the, the third chapter, verse 13, verse before our text. He said, ye have said it is vain to serve God. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Whatever God allows you to do, it, do your best at it. Come on, say it again, Reverend. Whatever God allows you to do, do your best at it. If you, whatever it is, I wish I had time to go down, whatever it is, there are no little bit of ministries in the church. When it comes to serving God, whatever God has told you to do, you ought to do your best at it. If you're preaching, you ought to do your best at it. If you're deacon, you ought to do your best at it. If you're working in leadership, you ought to do your best at it. If you sing a song, you ought to do your best. If you're playing instrument, do your best. If you're driving, cleaning, whatever it is, do your best at it. Can I have a witness? Because I'm here to tell you, you ain't the only one that can do it. God got some folk that can do it better than you and without the complaints that you give. Amen. Your words have been styled against me, he says. And he says, the Lord, yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? So you saying that serving me don't, don't profit nothing. You telling a lie. Somebody need to hear this. God waiting on you to come up and get in your place. We, we have on every Sunday, find your fit. <laughs> and folks just don't pay no attention to it no more. You walking around with gifts and you won't even use them. You walking around with some abilities that God gave you and you waiting for somebody to ask you to use it. But honey, you better go on and use it before you lose it. You better go and do it while you can do it because night will come. Can I have a witness here? 
serving God. Now watch this. That's their opinion. But then watch the opposition. Watch their opposition. See, they're addressing God. How, look how they, how they address serving God. First of all, we don't think it's going to pay off. Then they start to oppose him. That's in our verse. He says in verse 14, Ye have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is that we have kept this or his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Oh Lord. See when you don't think what you're doing don't matter. You're not going to do it very well. Amen. You know what? When you think coming to church ain't about nothing, then when you do come, it ain't going to mean nothing to you. But I look at some of our silverhead saints. I look at some folk that have been big rain, snow, and shun, sunshine, and divorce, and come, still come when they, when they lose the job, still come when, they, when things, their health have been, been demoralized, when they, they come when their mind has been unregulated, they come when people are talking about them, they come, they, 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 they're almost on their last leg, but they say, if I can only get to the church house, if I can only get there one more time. We got folks scared to come to church, don't want to come to church. The Bible says ain't nothing, ain't nothing like being in the presence of God and with the assembly of God. Ain't, ain't nothing. Look around today. You ought to be glad that you're not six feet under. God has given you another chance. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been taken granted, but I'm glad to see you one more time. Have I witness in this house? When they come to scripture. Watch the text. Watch the text. Watch the text. They, they, they ho-hum. Bible said they, they, they mournful. I, I like to think it like this. They, they singing, they singing Amazing Grace. And, uh, but they don't, they don't know nothing about grace. They done forgot that it was grace that brought them. Uh, Sing grace, uh, how sweet. Hey, what you, where you going tonight, girl? That saves a rest like me. Hey, hey, how about tomorrow? I was uh, mournful. If you're going to usher, you ought to have a placate smile. Amen. If you're working in the sound ministry, you ought to always be alert. Yeah. <laughs> if you are a deacon wife, I say if you're a deacon wife, <laughs> you ought to act like it. If you're a preacher wife, yes. You know what? If you are a deacon, you ought to act like it. I'll be glad. What's your name? I'm serving. Ready to serve. You ain't got to put no accolades on me. I'm glad. If you are a born again believer, you ought to be glad about it. <laughs> you ought to rear your, you 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 your shoulder back and be happy about it. God save me. Yes. And Lord, Woo. I'm at your service. Yes. You ought to wake up in the morning time. Yes. Lord, yes. what is it that I can do for you? Yes. You ought to get in the middle of your day and say, Father, I've done that. Yes. What else you want me to do? Yes. You ought to get around lunchtime and say, Lord, thank you. What else can I do for you? And you ought to get to Sunday morning and wake up around 6 o'clock in the morning and just get on your knees and say, Lord, thank you for bringing me through last week. Now, Lord, what you want me to do? Who you want me to give a witness to? You ought to bust open in these here doors, not late, but you ought to come here recognizing that, listen, I ain't mournful. I was dead, but now I am alive in Jesus Christ. Punch your neighbor and say, you hear him talking to us? Look at him again and say, you hear him talking to us? The sad state it is for God to do all these things for us and then we do them like we don't want to do it. I messed around and went into a Burger King a couple of days ago and I said, I want me a number two. 
And she says, you want what? So number two. She said, we ain't got no meat. I said, what? She said, I said, we ain't got no meat. And anyway, this is my last day anyhow. And so I'm glad you told me that. Can I offer you something else? She said, I said, no, ma'am. I walked on out that door. Have you ever been to Walmart? The right one now. And all you was going, ladies, for some stockings. And that little old lady, that little old man, greet you at the door, say, hey. Oh, hey, I'm glad you came by. You come out there with a basket full of stuff. Do I have any witness here? I said, do I have a witness? You, you, listen, men, have you, ever, have, you, have you ever had a nice lady, lady, to smile at you? You be like, come on in. You open the door and everything. And God has smiled on us. And whatever he gives you to do, you ought to do it. Not mournfully, but you ought to do it. Not looking for God to do anything. You ought to just be happy that God let you do what you do. Can I have a witness in this house? Is there any profiting in serving the Lord? Yes! Look how they, they addressed him. Watch your conduct. But then secondly, look how they approach serving God. In Malachi 3, 14, watch what they said. They, as they questioned the prophet of serving God. They said, what prophet is it that we have kept this ordinance? You know what they're saying? It's this word we see that their motivation and they, they, uh, they approach the matter of serving God. They had ulterior motives for serving God. Oh, I said, what you saying? Ulterior motives. Some, some, some folks, some folks serve God so they can get a position. Oh, Lord, Rev, go on, say it, preacher. Some folks serve the Lord <laughs> so they can get their name written down somewhere as such and such and such and such. Some folks serve the Lord because I want people to pay attention to me. <laughs> Some folks, you won't believe it. Some folks serve the Lord so that they can tell folks I'm this and I'm that. ulterior motives some folks want to be the preacher so they can write the checks some folks want to be a deacon so they can sit up on the pew in a prestigious place yeah some people want to sing in the choir so they can sing all the solos so everybody can say what a melodious voice you have. Without you, they are nothing. Die. <laughs> you ought to serve the Lord. Not on what John F. Kennedy said this here. Don't ask what your country can do for you, but rather what can you do for the Lord. Paul says, I don't, I don't talk about me because I ain't nothing. But I want to bear the marks of Christ in my body. David says, I made some mistakes. But one thing I learned, my heart is bent toward God. When you serve God because he's God and because he commands it and because he's good, you don't care where you fall in the echelon of the church. you just glad to do whatever it is and you're going to do it to the best of your ability. They had ulterior motives. 
But not only did they have ulterior motives, they had ulterior motives for, for not only they had ultimate motives for serving. Now, the reason we give, we give money is not so that folk can, you know, put our names up. I, I hate that kind of stuff. You don't, you don't want your name all up if, you, if you're doing it for the right reason. They ain't put, put, you ain't got to put my name nowhere. We're getting a new bus out there and, and you know, we want, they say, we're well, going to put your name big. I said, no, you don't put my name. Don't put my name big. I said, now, the only reason I'm putting it on that because I got to make sure nobody don't lose their mind. This Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, this ain't Willie Wells bus. This church, this bus belong to the Lord. Well, take your name off there. Well, take it off. That ain't going to make me stop preaching. When you serve God for the purpose of praising him and helping the people of God, it matters not where your name appears, what people say about you. You don't matter where your name is put up there or down there. You just glad that God used you one more time. Have I witnessed that some folk in our church and you thought, that you could not use your gift because it seemed like there were some folks that wouldn't move aside. But let me tell you, whatever he wants you to do, he'll make room for you to do it. And when he makes room for you to do it, get your bad bold self up in there and do it. Amen. Amen. Finally, 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 the scripture tells us that when we think about serving God, Look how they analyzed serving him. Back to the text, the latter part. It says, and ye have said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is that we have kept his ordinance? Here, here, here's the book. And that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Look what they claim. They claim that serving the Lord will make you mourn. It is very descriptive on how they felt. The word literally means they had a black emotions. Sometimes the word used to speak of the color of a person's skin, but it was also used to describe the dark tints of their hearts. Most often they were used to describe the apparel of people in sorrow. Now watch this. This is not mine, but I, I stole it from a, from a preacher. This is what he says. Alan says it was a claim that, that serving God was more of a burden than it was a blessing. He goes on, he says, they were saying it was more drudgery than a delight. It was a claim that serving God was a mournful experience. We need to teach us teach our children church is not a bad place you need to teach your children as you teach yourself that it's the best place in this world that you can be affiliated with I'm almost done you need to tell you need to tell yourself whenever I get to the church house I'm going to a place that if I listen real good, God's going to have an experience in me that's going to make my week much better. Come on, talk to me. Church is not a whole home place where you come and go to bed and lay down and wake up with a headache and go to bed with a headache and fooling around, ain't nothing happen. I don't know about you, but every time I come to church, I'm excited. I'm expecting God to do something. Every time I come to the church house, I believe that every time I preach a sermon, teach a lesson, somebody's going to be helped by it. I don't know about you, every time I leave the church, I might be worn out, but in it good to be worn out in Jesus. I know that my life is much better. I'm much better when I leave here because I'm looking for the Lord. I don't care if number 12 folks show up. I just want God to show up in me and I'm happy to leave out here leaping with joy. We're going to leave here today. We're going to eat that Lord's Supper. Some people are going to eat that Lord's Supper and going to take up the, the, the crackle and going to eat up the, the drink of the wine and fruit of the vine. And then you leave out 
still disgusted, busted, and no hope. The mere fact of me thinking about what Jesus has done, how he gave his body, how he's bled, he bled his blood, how they hung him, and how he died and how he rose. I, I ain't just eating some wafer. I'm not, I'm not just eating, drinking some, some fruit of the vine, some grapefruit. You know what it is, the representation. I'm having experience with Christ. And when you have an experience with Christ, don't fool me. Don't fool me. Have you ever had an experience with Christ? And did not he change your direction? Did not he change your mind? Did he give you joy in times of your sorrow? Did he put a bridge over troubled water? Did he make your mind resonate and rotate knowing that it's all well. I don't see how folk can leave one. You don't leave out here running trying to get to the play. You leave out here leaping with joy knowing that if I don't even get to the play that's all right. I just know that I've been in his presence and in the presence of God everything's become great. Say anybody here know what I'm talking about? How can you leave church after experiencing God and be mad at the folk that you came in? <laughs> Lastly, they claimed, but look what they concluded. Their final analysis and conclusion was this, as it is obvious, and what they were saying was, why would one serve God? Is it in vain? Is it unprofitable? And when all is said, it is nothing but a burden is what they said. Therefore, why should one walk want to serve God? Now, I don't know about you, but I have only one thing to say about their claim and their conclusion. And that is they were completely wrong in everything. The best I know how to describe them is that they were running their mouths about something they knew nothing about. When you start talking about aerospace technicians, I ain't got nothing to say. You go to talking about mm, calculus, don't have a thing to say. Yeah. When you go talking about cross-dressing, shut up, I don't have nothing to say. When you go talking about driving this and driving that, I have no word from Wales. But when you go talking about the Lord, oh, I'm finna talk. That's all, y'all, I want to come say to y'all, but you, you can talk about all how you can roll your dice. Uh, I ain't got nothing to say. Tell me how to cook your cake, all that, got nothing to say, cook your cake. Oh, but when you started talking about the Lord, I got something I want to say. When you get to telling folks how good he is to you and how he made a way for you, now I won't tell you kind of hush up a little bit because I won't tell y'all about what he done for me. I won't tell somebody, listen, I know you've been talking for the last 20 seconds, but let me talk to you now because I need to tell you that not only is he a way maker, but he's God Almighty. Can I have a witness in this house? I don't know about you, but you may not be able to talk in big crowds about this and that, but when it comes to talking about the Lord, you ought to be able to tell somebody how he brought you from where you were. Is that having a witness in this house? You ought to be able to stand anywhere. I don't care how many folks looking at you and tell somebody, listen, I may not get my English right. I may not get my participles and my verbs. They may not connect. But all I know is a man named Jesus came to my dwelling place. Look past my faults. Talk to me. Gave me another chance. I don't know about you, but I don't ever get tired of talking about him. He's been too good to me. He opened some doors that I could not see. He made a way that I could not understand. He's a good God. Can I have a witness here? That's all I came to say. 
that my God is an awesome God. And I don't care how the earth rock and reel. It doesn't really matter to me how many people change their minds about the Lord. And I know that we're living in some vicarious times. We, the Bible says we're living in some perplexed times. We're, we're living in some evil times. But, but all I know is that evil will always be judged. Uh, but those that walk in righteousness shall always, God will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You're, you've been faithful over a few things. Come on up and I'll make you ruler over many. Brothers and sisters, don't change your mind about God. It, serving the Lord will profit. It will bring you salvation. It will bring you hope. It will bring you peace. Somebody say, how you know that? Because it was on a Friday. Yes, it was a Friday that they took our Lord and our Savior. And the Bible says that they marched him up Golgotha's hill. Can I have a witness in this house? That he marched up Golgotha's hill. He had your cross and my cross on his shoulder. And the Bible says that they jeered him as he walked through the streets of Jerusalem. They sped upon him and called him everything but who he was. But he kept on serving the Lord. He said, I come to do his will. And before he put that cross on his shoulder, he said, Lord, this cup is bitter. And remove it from me, but nevertheless, not my will, <laughs> but let thine will be done. Can you see him on top of Mount Calvary? Yes, the Bible said they laid him down and nailed his hands. Yes, and they nailed his feet. Yes, so I'll not have to ask you to get happy about that. That was what's going on in the day of Malachi. Uh -huh. God had been real good to the folks. And they had forgotten about how good he had been. Yes. They nailed him down on the cross. And then they lifted him high. Yeah, and straight him out wide. Can I have a witness here? Whenever you read or hear the good news of the gospel, that he died. Oh, yes, he died. He died for my hang up and your hang up. He died. I know he died. He died until the moon ran down in blood. He died. Y'all sitting there looking at me. But I've got to tell somebody. He died for the rich and the poor. He died until he couldn't die no more. Everybody was gambling. And everybody was at the foot of his cross. And they were just passing him out. But I'm so glad that Jesus said three days I'll be down in the grave. But right early Sunday morning he got up with all power heaven and earth in his hand. And I tried him and I know he's alright. Have you tried him? Ain't he alright? He'll put clapping in your hand. Joy in times of sorrow. A bridge over troubled water. Ain't he all right? I say he's all right. Ain't he all right? I know he's all right. He's all right. I know he's all right. It's not taboo. To talk about how God raised you. How God made you. It's not taboo. It's not back in the old day. Talking about he, 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 just, he just shook me. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't, ain't nothing to be sad about how God picked you up and turned you around. Nothing wrong with that. Don't, don't go around folk that talking about it don't take all that. Tell them it take much greater than that because I no, he's all right. All right, all right. Now you're messing over on God. You forgot about that it was Jesus. Yes. 
that went to bed with you last night that woke you up this morning it was the Lord that put food on your table it was the Lord that gave you a mind to come to church it was the Lord that give you strength in times of weakness it will be the Lord that gets on you when you walk out of him. It'll be the Lord when you get in your car and keep you from having a wreck. It'll be the Lord when they take everything that you have but they can't take your joy. It'll be the Lord that when the enemy comes to eat your flesh, he won't be able to get it. It'll be the Lord that'll give you shouting in your spirit, give you clapping in your hand. Ain't he all right? I say he's all right. Ain't he all right? Won't he be bread? Won't he be water? Won't he be joy? Won't he be all right? Say, I know he's all right. Who I got to stop. But I'm here to tell you. Man, when, when Kobe... Before the ball go through the hoop. How, how, go Kobe. Don't you do it. And you see LeBron. And you be like, do it boy. You be like, how, throw your cane down. How, how. Yeah. Okay, see. What that boy name? Kevin Durant, you be like, do it, Kevin. We got my last five dollars on you, boy. Do it. Shout. And Jesus came all the way from heaven to earth, from the grave to the cross. Ain't no time to be getting quiet. Whenever you see Calvary. Listen to me. Whenever you see Calvary. Nobody should ask you to say nothing. When you see his nail scarred hands. His pierced side. You see him high and lifted up. Don't ever forget about where he brought you from. When you know who it is. Not ashamed to be numbered with him. When you know that your life has been designed by him. Nobody should ask you to holler. And if you never hollered before and God has saved you, just think about what he's done for you. And any word that today, listen, serving the Lord will pay off right now. When you look around this sanctuary and see how God has blessed you, it done paid off. If God don't ever do another thing for you and I, he's already done paid off. Because one glad morning, when this life is over, where you going, Reverend? Going up yonder.